Okay, so this is the example of synchronization of two threads. Let me change the color of my marker since red is already used here. Okay, so this is the step number one. This right here is the step number one. So what was the step number one? It was to include the library semaphore h. The second step was declare the semaphore variable in a place which is accessible by all the processes or the threads. Since in this example, we are performing synchronization between two threads. So the place which is common or accessible by all the threads is a global variable. So a global variables, variable is actually accessible by all the threads of a process. We, we studied that in the last week's videos, in the last week's topic. When we were studying multi-threading, we studied that. So I have declared the semaphore variable as a global variable. And we talked about it, that the data type of semaphore variable is sem underscore t. So sem underscore t, and I have named it mutex, right? Just, just for fun, I have named it mutex. This is the second step. Okay, one more thing. This variable char buff um, with a size 40, this is actually my critical section. What I have done is I have used an array with the name buff and I have declared it in a place which is global to all the variable, I'm sorry, to all the threads. So since it's global, it means any thread can access it. When any of the thread can access it, that means it is a critical section. So any of the threads can um, use it at the same time and I don't want that. So this is actually my critical section. And the this is the prototype of the two threads, the, the function of two threads. Okay, now let's see. This was the first step. This is the second step. Now let's go towards the third step. The third step was initialize the semaphore variable. So this is the initialization part. The first parameter was the address of semaphore variable. This is our semaphore variable mutex. So we have written address mutex. The second variable was p shared and p shared variable is zero when the synchronization is done between threads. Since we are doing it between threads, we have written at zero. And the last uh, parameter is the value, initial value of semaphore and that is always one. So we have used one here. Now here I have created two threads and we covered this last time. So I won't go in too much detail. But these are the two messages of the threads, first set, thread and second thread. I have uh, made a character pointer message one and just save them, save these strings in it. Now here I have created two threads uh, using the function pthread underscore create. So this is my thread one, this is my thread two. I have passed the function write buff to thread number one and I have passed the function read buff to the thread number two. Okay. Uh, you, you can assume what's happening here. You can, you can easily guess. So what I'm doing is the first thread will write in this um, variable buff in this character array buff and the second thread will try to read from it. And I have to make sure that they don't do it at the same time. So since I will, I have created them and you know that when threads execute, they run parallelly. So when they are running parallel, they both will try to use this critical section at the same time and I have to make sure that they don't do that. So let's see the next part of the code. Okay, also the fourth step was to destroy your variable mutex, your variable semaphore, but make sure that you do it just before return zero so that you, you are not destroying it before um, before the critical section is even being used. So, so don't do that, so just do it at the end of your program. Now let's see my two threads. This is my thread number one. This is actually the function of my thread one and this is the this is actually the function of my thread two. I have actually, I have said it the other way around. This is actually my thread one and this is actually my thread two. I said the opposite before. Okay, now let's see. In the function write buff, uh, remember the name of my critical section? It is buff, B-U-F-F. So in it, where are we using the variable buff. This is this is where this this line s print f s print f. This is the line where I'm using the function uh, the variable buff, which is actually critical section. So I'm just um, writing something in it. I'm just writing hello sixth semester in it using the variable s print f. So this is my critical section. I have to call the variable uh, the function sem underscore weight before the critical section and sem underscore post after critical section and this is how we do it. So I have called sem underscore weight before critical section and I, I have passed it my variable um, address of my variable uh, my semaphore variable which is mutex 
And similarly, I have called sem underscore post after critical section and passed it the address of my uh, semaphore variable mutex. Now let's see my second thread. So what I've done in the second thread, I have used the critical section buff and I have just printed it, printed this array on screen. Now, when I'm using it, I have to call sem underscore wait before and sem underscore post after this. So exactly like I've done here. Now this is the whole code. This, this is very, very easy. Synchronization through semaphores is very easy. This is the whole code. Now let's see the output. Let's see whether we were successful while synchronizing the two threads or not. Let's see that. And before seeing it, keep one thing in mind. I have created thread one first and I have created thread two afterwards. Let's see the output. Okay, here I have compiled my code and I have run it. There is one more important thing. While using semaphore uh, library, you also have to link it with the LP thread like we did it last time. You, you also have to do that. So we're not just doing it because we are using threads. Even when you will uh, do synchronization, you will perform synchronization on different processes. You will again uh, write do dash LP thread to compile the library semaphore.h. Now let's see when the program ran, it showed in main thread after creation of threads and also both threads are running in parallel. Also one more thing, I made a few modifications in terms of just more printf lines in the code so that you will understand it better before showing this out output in the previous code. Now what happened is second thread got the CPU first and second thread started first. So second thread, thread two, entered the critical section first. So that's why we are uh, seeing this line, thread two entering critical section. Afterward, first thread also started. So right now second thread hasn't left the critical section, but first thread has started and it will also attempt to use the critical section. So you must notice that after the first thread started, uh, it tried to attempt the critical section at once. So you must see thread one uh, and a line like this, thread one entering critical section. You must see it here, but you are not seeing it. Why? Because third, because first thread is actually blocked. So until thread two leaves critical section, thread one cannot enter. So you can see when the line appeared, thread two leaving critical section, then thread one actually entered the critical section. So it was actually blocked. So after thread two left, then thread one entered and then it left. Otherwise, if it was not blocked, this line uh, here, what I'm trying to say is if thread one was not blocked, then this line here must have appeared right here and it didn't. So that means it was actually blocked until thread two left critical section. So when thread two left, then thread one entered the critical section. So we can see that we were successful and they both are not using the uh, critical section at the same time.